What an amazing spell that was at the start of the Durham second innings, under three overs, and you'd knocked, knocked out four of their batsmen. Um, well, that was an outstanding spell, even for you. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's, um, I just yeah, found, a, found a patch of rhythm, I think, so it's, um, you know, the wicket, there's a little bit of help there for the seam bowlers. If you just find an area and bash away for a while, a bit of uneven bounce and things like that, which creates a bit of doubt, so it's, um, yeah, from my point of view, really pleasing to, to, uh, to get back um, and find a bit of form again and, uh, and get some wickets. Most of the wickets taken by, I think, Chris Rushworth, Tim Lindley and yourself have been bowling from this southern castle end. Is it particularly you're finding a spot at the northern end of the pitch to, to pitch on? Uh, we, we, did, we did speak about how that seems to be the end that uh, the wickets are falling and, and obviously we're, you know, with the bowler down at the moment, we've, you know, the two seamers, it's best for us to try and both go from one end once the, we, we got through our new ball spell really, so that was the plan and um, you know, came, came off at the start, so we've got, you know, we're still a, you know, a long way behind the game obviously at the moment, we've got to try and take these, get these uh, wickets tomorrow morning and, um, and bat well and just uh, take the game uh, as long as we can uh, in the run chase. They had a very good partnership didn't they, Scott Borthwick and Gordon Mutchell, as, that as you say took the game away from you really. Yeah they did, they, were, you know, they sort of weathered the storm there a bit really, I, like, like I said I felt in really good rhythm and the ball was coming out nicely and I, I sort of threw everything I had of them at the time and, um, and they, they got through that period which is uh, you know, well played by them so you know, they've obviously set up a decent lead on, on that surface at the moment so like I said you know, tomorrow's a big day uh, primarily in the morning, you know, we've still got a lot of work to do because they bat, they bat all the way down as well so if we can tidy up the tail uh, and get batting and, uh, and try and put some overs in the legs of their bowlers and, and uh, you know, get the ball a bit soft and, and see how we go towards the back end of the day. I mean you were bowling well, it's brilliant to see Tim Lindley bowling so well because obviously he hasn't played a lot of cricket and, and because it's his first game for Sussex. Yeah it is, yeah, he's, uh, he's coming back from, from some time off which uh, you know, and obviously he's looking for some cricket and it's great that we've been able to bring him in to, to cover a few bases that, that we need covering at the moment as well. And, you know, we, you know, I wasn't around Sussex when Tim was here last, but I've, I've played, you know, we've, we've all played against him the last few years. And, uh, and the good thing about Tim is that you know exactly what you're going to, what you're going to get from him, you know what he's going to deliver and um, he's bowled well against us here at Arundel a couple of seasons ago when he was playing for, for Surrey as well. So he was, you know, I, I kind of knew he was always going to be pretty well suited to this wicket uh, and, and, you know, he stood up really well for us this game and, and you know, great five for him in the first innings and he's bowling well again in the second. You need to get four more wickets. If you could get those fairly quickly, probably be chasing, or shall we say, 300. Is that attainable by Sussex? If we bat well, then it is, yeah. Like I said, we've got to try and take the game as long as we can. Um, you know, the new ball looks like it's going to be the crucial period again uh, for, for our top order to, um, you know, to, to get through. And if they can do that and, and, and set things up for the uh, for themselves in, in the middle overs, once the ball does get a bit soft, and um, like I said, if we can get overs into their into their fast bowlers as well and try and get them a bit weary and uh, get them into their second, third, fourth spells of the day, and um, you know, if we're chasing a score like that, then we're going to need to bat the rest of tomorrow and probably into the fourth day as well. So if we can, if we can do that and still be here on the fourth morning, then um, then we certainly got a good chance. Do you need some partnerships, which just just didn't seem to happen in that first innings, did it? No, I didn't look the credit to them. They bowl well, and um, you know they they were able to to uh, to bring guys on one after the other and, and have short bursts on that sort of surface. It's a difficult wicket as a bowler to try and you know lock in for a seven, eight, nine over spell and feel like you're, you're in the game because it's quite, quite a taxing wicket. So, um, you know, they were able to go short spells and rotate quite quickly and, uh, and obviously Rushy's in, you know, in fantastic form and he bowled, he bowled brilliantly and, um, you know, so we're going to have to work out a, a way to, to, to combat him against Corey. Yeah, can I ask about Chris Rushworth? I mean, you're an expert on, on fast bowlers. He's taken 50 first class wickets now. Must be knocking on the door of the England selector, surely. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he's uh, you, you can't um, you can't you know, debate the stats really, can you? So he's a, he's been a, a, just a regular wicket taker for a number of years now. So um, where where they see where they would see him fitting into into a bowling lineup, you know, who knows? That, that would be up to the England selectors, I suppose, and, and and the conditions and things like that. Um, obviously, there's some decent bowlers up there at the moment, which uh, uh, are all you know. There's a few guys that aren't in the side in and around the squad that are, that are, that are pushing as well. So all you can do, all, all he can do really, is just keep taking 50-odd wickets a season by halfway through, really. So it's, uh, if you keep doing that year after year, then, then surely at some point in time you'd like to think you get, a, you get an opportunity. But and your Aussie boys are going to be here very shortly. It's some way out, obviously, from the Ashes, but how do you see the series set up at the moment? 
Uh, look, I think it's going to be a really good series. I think I, I think the interesting part is is the way England seem to have transformed their one-day cricket, and, and and I think if they can take that sort of approach into into the Test series, then you've probably got two sides who are going to go absolutely toe to toe, playing the very similar attacking uh, in your face brand of cricket, really. And um, uh, I don't think there will be too many draws floating around. I wouldn't have thought so. I think I think it'll be an entertaining series. Um, you know, Australia's got a lot of firepower in, in, in the bowling lineup, so um, that will. That will be interesting to see how how that goes. Obviously, conditions in England are slightly different to what they, uh, what the England boys faced against those guys last last time round in Australia, where there was a lot more pace and bounce. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to be in favour of the Aussies, aren't I? So. Of course, you are. <laughs>